Hey James at Barber Creek Long Range Hunting and Shooting School. Today we're going to be taking a look at the SIG Kilo 8000 or 8K which is the little brother of the Kilo 10K which is the binocular series. These are both phenomenal range finders. They're probably one of the better ones on the market that we've used. Uh, it has applied ballistic software in it. This is a class 3 laser. This is a class 1M. They're both very very fast no lag time you don't have to worry about waiting for screens to rotate setting the wind is very easy now compared to what the 2400 that sig used to put out all right or they still have out but this is the new one the body is similar or it may be the same body this has the matrix screen the same as the 10k it allows you to literally on one screen get your dial ups your winds hold density altitude retain velocity and retain energy this is super fast there's really some cool tricks in it, just like the 10K, which we're gonna go over. Um, I will say one thing, we've been testing this for a few months and my clients have been testing it. What do I mean by that? I always tell companies, whether it's Kawa or Trijicon or Nightforce or SIG, I'll say, hey, if you want us to test something, let my students test it. Because my students don't know better not to over push the buttons, over twist the knobs. And I do know better, so for me, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to be careful with it. They don't know any better. They're the end user. And guess what? If it's going to break, the end user is going to break it. So let them do it. And that's what we've been doing. We've been running this in school. We've been running the 10K in school, and they've been working phenomenal. So stand by, and we're going to go right into the next section on this. These are great. You're going to love them, so stand by. All right, initial setup. Well, first of all, once you download the app, which is the BDX app, it's the same app for the 10K and the 8K, you need to set up the app. So you're going to open up the app, and once it opens, you're going to go ahead and hit the little gear in the upper right-hand corner and make sure it's in the system that you want. In other words, yards or meters, miles per hour, kilometers per second, whatever you're going to use. Um, or kilometers not per second feet per second inches grains feet we're talking about all the different units the site units moa milridian uh, however you want to use it for your metric system or your imperial system so this is all good i do want you to make sure that you turn on aerodynamic jump coriolis effect and spin drift make sure that's turned on once that's all done you're done now the rangefinder itself, once you initially get the rangefinder into software, now mine's not going to do it because I've already got it connected. You're going to fire it to wake it up and you're going to go to pairing. Now what's going to happen as soon as I click pairing rangefinder, you can already see mine says 8K with a serial number. Yours won't. Yours will show an 8K, but it's going to give you a pin number. All right. And the pin number is going to be in here. You're going to go and select pin. And it's going to say, for instance, 11. You'll type in 11. Again, you can't see this because it's already happened. And you're going to hit done. You're now paired. So your software is now paired specifically to that one rangefinder. All right, once you're done with that, you can actually go into the rangefinder itself. And you can see that it's connected. And there's all your information. All right, and it tells you that it's connected. And really, that's it once you got it set up initially as far as the software goes. Uh, and what we're going to do next is I'm going to go into the actual menus on the rangefinder itself. I'm going to go through setup, so stand by. All right, to go through the menu in the rangefinder itself, it's very simple. It's straightforward, just like the 10K was. Fire it to wake it up, which is the fire button on top. You got a mode button on the left. I want you to hold the mode button until you get a new screen. There it is. The arrow is pointing to range mode. If I fire into it, it's got BDX Elite, which is what you want to leave it on to just use the rangefinder. External, if you go down to external, it's basically using a different piece of equipment, whether it's a Kestrel or whatever you're using. Angle modified range, line of sight, and then back. You're going to leave it on BDX Elite if you're just using a rangefinder. Go ahead and fire and hit back. Next, mode down to ballistic profile. Hit fire and it tells you all of the guns you've got in here. This will hold a lot of guns. Unlike the old one where it only held four guns on the Kilo 2400. And the Vortex Fury 5000 only holds three guns. This will hold a lot of guns. I don't even know how many. I haven't finished putting them all in. But I put seven in at one time and it puts them in quick. What you're going to look for is the, the one with the square around it. The square around it means that's what's selected. I'm going to scroll down to gun two and I'm going to fire. And now I selected gun two, hit back, save. And now gun two is the profile I'm using. 
Go down to wind speed. You fire into it. You can adjust the wind speed by hitting the plus sign or go down to the minus sign and bring it. I'm going to leave it at about a one mile an hour because that's what I'm seeing out there today. Hit back and then wind direction, mow down to it. Clock, just like you've seen on the 2400s. So let's set it for a nine o'clock wind. Boom, hit the mode button, go back. Target mode. Last target, first target, best target, extended range fog. When you're in fog mode, it really ignores about the first 75 yards, and that way it'll cut through fog and you can still range. The extended range, I've only used it a couple times, but honestly, when I leave it on best target, it works about the same. Now the extended range will give you an extended range. It slows down the amount of packets that are being sent out. So that way you can get out further before it starts to bounce back and you can pick up farther targets. Uh, last target means it's gonna basically try to pick up the last target that it picked up and then first is the first target that it picked up. My opinion, leave it on best. All right, go back down to back save. Display brightness when you fire into it. It's nothing more than you can set it to a low, medium, medium two, medium three, high, high. Leave it on auto, that's what I do. And then the light from outside or the ambient light will hit the lens and inside of it, it computes it and says, okay, let's make the brightness look like this. So it auto adjusts the brightness. All right, so let me back out of that. All right, and then we're gonna go right into our next menu, which is reticle selection. Fire into it circle duplex you've got a square you've got grid full half the grid just gives you little lines left and right uh, you can use it if you want to me it's just too much noise inside of the rangefinder so i leave it off i like the circle the circle works really good it's a tiny circle again your choice all right back save unit of measurement this is where you can go in yards meters fahrenheit celsius miles per hour meters per second feet all that good stuff mrad moa i'm going to leave it at imperial settings mode down again you're in feature settings this is where you can enable or disable your bluetooth density altitude startup logo this actually has a meter which i will show you that will show you the signal strength of the target you're ranging i personally keep it off but if you want it it's there it's kind of cool all right, hit back. Compass, when you initially get this rangefinder, as soon as you hit fire, it's gonna say compass start, and then I hit compass start, and it's gonna ask you to run it in a figure eight. Now mine doesn't do that anymore because it's already calibrated. Once it's calibrated, it actually shows you what the range is. In other words, the cardinal direction. I know that that is 64 degrees, and when I look at it right now, I'm at 65 degrees, so it's pretty close. All right, mode back. Go back into your menu again. We're going to go down to feature settings and onboard settings and compass. So we're going to go to onboard settings. This is where you would adjust the temperature from auto to manual. And I'm going to talk about this in the temperature mode. So when I fire into it, I'm going to leave it on auto. What is auto doing? It's allowing the body of the rangefinder to pick up the temperature. All right. If I go to manual, it's going to allow me to physically adjust the temperature that this thing needs to be in. Why would you do that? Pretty much if you hunt out of a heated blind and you're shooting in 30 degrees, the rangefinder, if it's in the building with you or in your blind, it thinks your bullet's flying in 70 degrees. It's not. So you're going to make a mistake at long range because your bullet has more air thickness against it because of the colder air outside. That's why you would manually go in and adjust this to the temperature that's outside. So now we're to do the ballistics for the colder air. But since I've got the air conditioning and heater off in this building right now, we're pretty much the same temperature. I'm going to leave it on auto. So let me put it back on auto. That's really it. So once you're done with this, you can go down to about and kind of read about it. You have now set up the rangefinder. You're ready to rock and roll. So the next thing we need to do is what? We need to put ballistics in this rangefinder so we can use it. So stand by for putting in your data. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about putting the data in our rangefinder. To do that, we're gonna use the BDX app. And once you open the BDX app, you're gonna click on custom profiles. And from there, you're going to create a new profile. So this is new, and we're going to select gun, not crossbow, and you're going to name it. So right now, we're just going to name it gun2test. 
We're running our skull gun, which is a terminus action and 6.5 Creedmoor, so with a benchmark barrel in it. <clears throat> We're going to then go to the library, and since this is a 264 caliber or a 6.5, we'll click on 264. Hornady ammunition. We're running factory Hornady ammunition, and this is a 140 grain ELDM match. Now, as soon as you click on the 140 grain ELDM match, a little white box pops up that says G1, G7, or custom curve. You can use a G7, there's nothing wrong with it, but we prefer to use a custom curve. The folks over at Applied Ballistics, they will basically take a G7, modify it, and make it a little bit better based on the actual projectile, and uh, they do a really good job of that without going into how a custom curve is built. Bottom line, if you're offered custom curve, accept it. Boom, it drops in bullet weight, bullet length, and the ballistic coefficient is CC custom. Muzzle velocity, I'm going to start off in a nominal velocity. I'm going to use the box of ammo, and let's just say 2710. Why? Because we're going to true the velocities, so I don't even need to run a chrono. Barrel twist is 8 twist, and sight height. So to get the sight height, what I like to do is take your rifle, and if I get this in the video, there we go. All right. You're going to take a set of calibers and you're going to measure the front of the scope and the back of the scope. What do I mean by that? You're going to measure basically from center of the scope to center of the receiver and center of the back ring scope to center of the receiver. Take a pair of calibers and we'll measure it. 2.09 and in the back we have 2.11. So. Why do we have something different from the back of the 2.09 and the 2.11? Simple, we have a 20 MOA rail. That's why I measure front and back because I will add those two together, divide by two, and that's gonna give us about a 2.1 sight height. Let me go back in here and type in 2.1 sight height, and we're basically done. I'm gonna hit save. Uh, I'll make sure the rangefinder is awake. I am going to go down and highlight that new profile we just made and I'm going to hit sync and boom it's going to go ahead and drop it in and instantly just like that it drops it in unlike the older rangefinder like the 2400 it takes about a minute this takes seconds I can now pick this up I can fire it and look inside and then what I want to do is make sure it's on that profile to get into that just like we talked about earlier hold the mode button go to ballistic profiles once you get into the ballistic profile, you're going to highlight gun to test and hit back, save, and we are now done. All right, to true your velocities, what you need to do is you're going to open up the app, which I have open, fire the rangefinder, make sure it's awake. The first thing we need to do, of course, like we talked about in other videos back in, like when we're doing this Kilo 2400 and the 10K, make sure the correct wind's in. So let me set the wind. I just looked through the scope. The wind's left to right at about one mile an hour. So I'm going to go here and set the wind. And yep, that's what it is. Okay, we're good. So first thing I need to do is range the target. We're going to go to 700 yards. And it's telling me 17 and a half minutes. There's 17 and a half. Look, I know it's going to be wrong. I got it. Why? Because we used a box of ammunition velocity. We didn't use a chronograph. And I know this gun's faster than 2710, but that's okay. This is how we true. Why do I start at 700 yards? Because 700 yards is really where earth base effects and secondary effects can start to be dialed out based on a quarter minute turret. So we're going to go right to 700 and let's take a shot first at 700 yards to see where we're at. And we know we're probably going to be a little bit off, but that's all right. Again, because we're chewing our velocities, we don't really care where it's hitting, all right? Help put the bullet in straight. Okay, so we're gonna go on target number five. All right, we're gonna shoot one more and verify. So as you can see, we're at the very top of the plate and then the second shot went right over the plate. That's normal, right? Why? Because again, the ballistics don't match and we know they're not going to. 
So I can see I'm about a minute high, so I'm gonna bring it down a full minute. We're gonna go 16 and a half, and we're gonna shoot it one more time and try to get the correct dial-ups. Okay, just next to the bullseye, we'll verify. I never make an adjustment off a single bullet. I got a buck out there looking at me. And exact same bullet hole. So we know that that's a good ballistic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the rangefinder program, open up the actual rangefinder. And at the bottom of the rangefinder, first thing it wants you to do is it wants you to go ahead and fire the rangefinder at the target so it gets to correct yards. Okay. All right. You're gonna click the little button on the bottom right that looks like a cross here, go to drop scale factor, and it already dropped in 701 yards, and we're gonna tell it how many minutes it really took us to hit the bullseye. So we're at 16.5, hit done, hit calculate. Our new adjusted velocity is 27.55, hit set. We're gonna hit back and hit yes and it automatically drops it back in your rangefinder let's double check it now and now what it says is for 700 yards 16.57 minutes which is perfect 16 and a half all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go right out to a thousand yards and we're going to double check our truing so let me go ahead and range it It says 30 and a half minutes. And it says our wind is 1.61. Let me set up the long range camera and I'll be right back. All right, going out to a thousand yards. Check our parallax. Wind looks really good. We're gonna give it about a minute and a half left wind. Just above the clay pigeon under target five. Try one more shot. Broken clay pigeon. So I would say our dad is pretty good. That's how you true velocities. Setting the wind in the new Kilo 8K is really simple. Fire button, mode button, hold them at the same time. And it gives what's called a fast menu. That's how fast it got into it. Fire into wind speed. You can increase or de decrease by hitting the plus or minus sign. I'm going to leave this at 3 mile an hour. Go to next. Clock direction. You keep hitting the fire button. It rotates it all the way around. I'm going to leave it at 9 because it is a 9 o'clock wind. I just looked through the Kawa spotting scope and we're running a three mile an hour, nine o'clock wind, hit back, save, boom, we're done. So now when I range the target, not only does it give me uh, 707 yards, 17 minutes so up, it says 1.88 for a left wind. And it told me I've got 942 foot pounds of energy and 1741 feet per second retained velocity. That is a dead animal. That's how you set wind. So stand by for the next section. Okay, one thing I wanted to talk about that this rangefinder does different than others is it literally tells you what ballistic profile you're on instead of A, B, C, or profile one, two, three. This says gun test two, it says 28 nozzler, 6.5 PRC, whatever you tell it. But I'm gonna show you how fast this rangefinder works. So I'm just gonna kind of run the gamut. I'm gonna range it real quick. The pig is about 416 yards. And it's saying six and a three quarter minutes. Going to the pig. All right. Next, we'll go to the antelope. It's at 500 yards. Nine and a quarter minutes.
Go all the way out. Gims Buck 821 says 21 minutes and wind is two and a quarter. Parallax real quick. As you can tell, super fast, accurate, good wind, good dial ups, compensated for station pressure, temperature, altitude, angle, spin drift, Coriolis, aerodynamic jump, and vertical etovis, and allows you to shoot and kill everything you want to shoot. Another key feature about this rangefinder that no other rangefinder does except for the 10K, made from the same company in SIG, is it allows you to align your circle or your crosshair with the actual beam. To do that, fire it to wake it up, open up your app, and you're going to go into rangefinder, click the gear in the upper right hand corner and kick, click alignment. When you do that, a new screen comes up that allows you to move it horizontally or vertically. And when I'm in my rangefinder itself, it's actually showing me the alignment reticle. And I've already aligned this and you can see I had to go up too. You would mount it on a tripod or hold it as steady as you can. And then what you would do is while you're looking through the rangefinder itself, you would start clicking the fire button on the app, which I'm going to do right now. And it just told me that is 730 yards. That's correct. 821. So I don't need to align it because I already did, but if I needed to align it, I can literally tap these up or down or left or right until the beam is hitting the target that you're shooting at when you're all done hit back and it, it automatically saves it. So you have now aligned your rangefinder. That is a great tool. I don't know how many times I've used rangefinders, everything from the old Gunworks BR2s to the uh, Bushnells to the Leopolds, you name them, uh, that when you range the target, you always gotta remember to put the target at the bottom of the circle or the top of the circle. You don't have to do that anymore. This fixes it. Basemap is another program that you can download and what Basemap does is it gives you a mapping software. The good thing is this will connect to your Basemap. So you do have to pay a subscription, I believe it's $29 a year. And the way it works is when you open up Basemap and then you take your rangefinder, you're going to go ahead and Basemap and you're going to click on the little plus sign and then when the plus sign is going to give them the window, you're going to say add remote marker. And when you add the remote marker, when you fire the rangefinder, for instance, when I range that elk out there, it literally drops in a waypoint to where that elk was. And it tells you how far it was, how many minutes and dial-ups and everything you did. Really good tool. Why do we need that? Let's say you're shooting an elk across a canyon or across a river. It falls. You can't really see where it is. You're going to try your best to remember. You don't really have to. This puts a marker where it is. You can walk around and get to the animal, or when you cross the river, it'll walk you to it. It's basically like a little GPS, and it takes you right to the animal. Another great tool by SIG and Basemap. The way temperature works with this rangefinder is you can literally go inside of the menu itself, hold the mode button on the side, go down to onboard sensors fire into it and it's on auto at this point which means the outside of the body is reading the temperature if I scroll over to manual I can increase or decrease the temperature why does that matter well if you hunt out of a heated blind which a lot of people do here in Alabama because right now it's 37 degrees outside and this is literally hunting season and while I was talking to you earlier I had a buck come out I didn't shoot it anyway the rangefinder thinks that your bullet's flying in 75 degrees. It's not. That's what your little buddy heater is heating up your blind in. Now here in this heated and air conditioned shoot house at Barber Creek, I can have the heater on, which I do because I don't want to get cold. But bottom line is the rangefinder is reading one temperature, your bullet's flying in a different density or thickness of air. Since the air is colder than what the air is in here, it's thicker, which means what? It's got more drag against the bullet. So you're going to make a bad shot at long range. Now, it's not going to be a ridiculously bad shot, but it could be a half minute or a quarter minute. 
if you hunt in one of those situations where you're hunting up a heat of blind and shooting in cold weather, just go in and set it manually to the outside temperature. Now, if you're not, just leave it alone and leave it on auto. I leave mine on auto unless I'm in a heated blind like right now. That's it. That's how temperature works. In conclusion, the Kilo 8K is a phenomenal, very compact ballistic rangefinder that reads station pressure, temperature, altitude, angle, spin drift, Coriolis, aerodynamic jump, and it gives you a shoot too. Uh, this has a class 3 laser, like I mentioned earlier, it allows you to adjust for temperature, not only using the body, but in manual mode, you can adjust the beam inside of it, it will Bluetooth to base map on your phone. The other thing that's really important about this, and I can't stress this enough, in my classes I teach 1600 feet per second retained velocity with a copper cup and a lead core bullet. What does that mean? a Burger VLD, a Hornady ELD series, a Nazar Acubon, Sierra Game Changers. Those are all lead core based with the copper jacket. We need that bullet to strike the animal in the shoulder and penetrate three to five inches and then fully mushroom and function inside the thoracic cavity of the animal to cause that hydrodynamic shock for it to fall in its tracks. And to do that, we train people to use 1600 feet per second retained velocity. That's enough velocity left on impact for the bullet to function. Uh, and what's nice about this rangefinder is it literally tells you that. So you don't have to guess, is that animal too far? Do I have, have enough retained velocity or energy? It's going to literally say, hey, that, rain, that, that mule deer is 826 yards. You have 1,742 feet per second left. And you have 800, 900 foot-pounds of energy. You now know that with your ethics that you can take that animal. And that's it's really important because back in the day when I was just using the Kilo 2400, I had to open up the phone app to look at it at the same time, and I don't like doing that. Everything's on one screen, so that's a great tool. We do all kinds of bullet testing uh, at 600 and 1,000 yards and 20% NATO spec gel to see how bullets perform at retained velocity. And then, of course, we shoot animals with it, so we double-check the bullets to make sure they function before we shoot a live animal. And again, this is one way to help you make that decision whether you can make the shot. Bottom line, the Kilo 10,000 and the Kilo 8,000 are phenomenal rangefinders. We're really happy that they're out, and we look forward to seeing what SIG is going to come out with in the future. Barbara Creek's Long Range Hunting School provides you with a skill set to ethically make shots well beyond 800 yards. With one of America's top long range instructors, a 1,500-yard rifle range, a heated and air-conditioned classroom and shoot house, we are able to teach year-round. We offer luxurious sleeping accommodations and full-course meals for our clients, making us America's premier long range hunting school. Contact us at barbaracreek.com or 334-845-0000.